Dave, obviously you just gave an update on Peyton uh, and his status. What does it mean to to have a player like that still healthy and, and know that you, uh, <laughs> you'll have him for, for the future moving forward? Yeah. Oh man, it's so fun watching Peyton play. And, and um, I'm just thankful for him. First of all, you know, he's the one that's been through it uh, medically and, and put in the time, the effort and the hours to play the sport. And it means the world to him. And you can see that in his play. And so we're thankful that he's healthy. Thank the Lord for that and look forward to seeing him play again and uh, continue to do what he's doing. I mean, and I, I don't know if there's anyone in college football that's having the impact he is in the game. Um, I haven't seen it yet. I'm not saying I haven't seen a lot of good players this year. I have. That guy that's just a wrecking ball out there and what he's doing in so many ways, his effort and energy and everything else, his leadership. So thankful that he gets to continue the journey with us. Thank you. Jaden. Hey, Dave, you talked about the different areas that you want to see improve this week. Is there like one specific that you're highlighting above any others? You're talking about on offense, defense, special teams, or just collectively? I would say collectively. You know, I'd like to just learn from what just happened. You know, I think I told him this uh, in the meeting. Like, we need to play like we lost the game. We need to practice like we just lost the game. You know, and I think just learning from the the outcomes of the weeks that we've had, uh, taking the information that we've gained through wins and losses, through adversity and through success, and building on it. You know, and and you shouldn't have to suffer to always learn the right way to do something. You know, and to me, that's the biggest area is just be able to look at, man, I, I really played well in this game. I played better. I played hard. Uh, what happened? You know, I had to go through a humiliating loss and, and practice a certain way. Well, okay, let's repeat that with a win. And that's the growth. You know, it's sometimes it's hard with these young people to, to get them to strain the way they need to all the time until you get them in a really adverse situation like we were in. And so I think it's just the growth of that, you know, taking success and and failure, treating them the same when it comes to your preparation for a game. Noah? Kind of going off of that, has that been something you've noticed, I guess, with this team coming off of a win? Because, you know, you have a, you know, lost to Louisville, came back, had a win against Marshall, and then, you know, lost to Duke, come back for the win. Is that something you kind of noticed, or is it just kind of just be a trend or something like that? Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's what it looks like. Uh, I said this before, I, I did not see the performance coming that we we had against Duke based on our practice. We practiced well that week. And so obviously uh, not well enough, but in years past, you could see it, you know, man, we weren't very clean this week and I would be really nervous. And that's not what I saw. I saw a team that practiced hard and was actually executing well and guys had energy and, you know, they weren't uptight uh, at the hotel. So, you know, I think sometimes it's just harder to read certain guys than others. This team, the um, thing I like about them, man, they're resilient, you know, and I think they've learned a lot. And so, you know, whether it's a trend or not, we got four games left. I told them it was a five-game season. We're 1-0, and and we're going to put everything we got into this next one. Ethan? Hey, Coach, it seems like Robert Kennedy – had a great day in coverage, holding Clemson's leading receiver to, you know, just, I think, one intercept, one reception against them. Just how would you assess uh, his performance? Yeah, Rob's done a great job this year. He's been super consistent, works hard every day, goes about his work the right way. He's focused. He's not up and down. He's easy to coach. Um, he's here for a reason. He knows what his role is, and he's done it. You know, and each week there's little things that, he's working on and coach Freddie Autry Lindsay does a good job with him narrowing down his focus onto those things so excited for him and then another challenge this week I one of Miami's best players is their slot receiver number seven he's a really good player so be a great matchup James Dave you've talked about it before in the past but uh, how important is game flow you know, with this team and the ability to kind of get out, get out early and allow your defense to really take control of the game? 
it helps uh, it helps helps a lot you know to have a little bit of a cushion um we haven't had a lot of a cushion you know but it does help to be playing from ahead versus behind um you know we're still young when you look at who's out on the field at times on offense there's some young dudes out mm -hmm. there playing and you know mj's just in his second year still and you know kc freshman kendrick Raphael, true freshman you know so you've got some youthful guys out there when it comes to that but uh I think the one thing that, you know, we really talked a lot about getting ready for this last game was just that in play mentality of playing together and then breathe next play and let everything else go till we get to the sideline and just focus on what you can do and not let things compound. Because uh, that's where it gets hard. You know, you start having negative talk and you start thinking negatively because of something that might happen. Like they got good players at Clemson. They're going to beat you at times. And you just got to compete your butt off and go to the next play and win the next play. And, and if you do that more times than they do it, usually the scoreboard is a collection of your wins individually over time. And so that's been our focus and it worked for us, you know, and I think we'll stay probably in that process, uh, getting ready for another great team with Miami. Aaron. Hey, Dave. Um, I was looking at some defensive stats. Like you guys are in the middle of the conference and defense, scoring defense and total defense. But if you look a little deeper, it's kind of things like number two in sacks, number three in third down conversions. Yeah, I guess stats never tell the whole story. What kind of what do you think is the maybe the top one or two things you guys as a coaching staff when you're looking at maybe is how your defense is playing? that you point to and say, this is, this is what we need to be really good at. Well, the most important stat in defense is scoring defense. And so our goal is to get back into the top three in our league, top 20 in the country in scoring defense. Uh, the next most important goal is the number of takeaways that you force on defense. So, you know, can you keep points off the board and can you get the ball back? Uh, obviously third down defense is getting the ball back as well. Our fourth down defense is getting the ball back as well. But, you know, those takeaways are big momentum plays. They're usually field position gainers, not always, but usually. Um, and so, you know, we're doing really well in third down defense, doing really well taking the ball away. Um, our disruption and, and chaos that we create throughout the game, there's a lot of plays in their backfield with sacks and tackles for loss, like you mentioned. And so now it's just eliminating big plays for touchdowns was a huge emphasis, and that happened last week. You know, you're going to give up some explosive plays. Clemson had... I think eight in our game, but none of them were for touchdowns. And so now it's seven, none of them were for touchdowns. And that to me is what it's all about because, you know, you stop them, hold them to a field goal, they may miss, which you saw them miss one of them. Those are the things that matter, you know, and, and see if they're good enough against a defense like ours to keep grinding it out. And uh, that's where everything is, though, to me, um, scoring defense and takeaways. To follow up on that, is there, I mean, total defense, people talk about total yards. Do you guys, do coaches care much at all about that set? It doesn't seem like it tells a lot beyond just the yardage. Number. Yeah. I think coaches care about everything. Um, but I agree with you. I don't think that stat equals wins like the other ones do. Corey? Dave, kind of a two-part question here. First of all, is there any, I may have missed it earlier, but is there any update on Trent Penix's status from last week? I know he didn't play in that game. And it seemed like there was a little bit more implementation of Juice Farine in that game. Obviously, he did have the one drop, but just your thoughts on getting him in the game and, and where that tight end position stands right now. Hopefully, we'll have Trent back. I'm not sure yet. Uh, they were testing him in the training room a little bit before I came up here. And so I haven't heard from our trainer yet, but hopeful, hopeful we'll have him. Uh, as far as juice, yeah, I mean, we're continuing to develop him, try to get him, you know, reps where he can help us. And he's growing, he's improving. Uh, obviously, I know he would love to have made that play there on third down. It's a good job by MJ throwing it with the blitz and he just didn't have his head back for it quick enough. But he's a young player again, you know, out there. And sometimes when you play him, they're going to have some youthful mistakes and just got to get his learning curve to speed up a little bit, but he's working really hard. He's got a great attitude. He's grown up a lot this year. He's got a lot of growth still, but from where he was at week one to where he is now, 
uh, is maturing and um, it's just got to keep taking it one day at a time. Thanks, Dave. Yep. yep. Kind of talked about it after the game, but how impressive, you know, going back and looking at the film was um, Sean Brown and kind of step, stepping in from Peyton Lewis on that last drive. You know, he made five tackles on one drive at linebacker there. Yeah, I mean, he is a ball player, man. I mean, his football IQ is high. Um, you know, his attitude, his effort, his athletic ability, his toughness, it's its all exactly what you want. If I could go recruit 10 more of Sean Brown, I would. And uh, at whatever special team he goes on, he makes plays too. He's a playmaker. He's got a really bright future. Um, and he can do a lot, you know. He can play in the, in the back end, as you see. But the closer he gets to the ball, you know, whether he's blitzing or fitting the run, he makes plays. He's got a really long wingspan. He's strong. He's a good tackler, you know, and he's learning how to play faster and faster. Things are really clicking for him with his vision and what he's looking at. Brian Murphy. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. To go back to the Smith comments, I appreciate uh, um, just got a couple of quick ones. Did, did he commit to come into a game? And then how did you see the comments? Was that something you had been thinking about kind of all day? And then lastly, it, it seems like uh, you got state fans pretty fired up. What, what kind of reactions did you get? I imagine it was overwhelmingly positive. Um, no, he hasn't committed yet, and I'm hopeful he will. Uh, he said when he gets back, he's traveling, that we'll connect and try to work some things out on when we could get him here. I don't know when that'll be. But uh, it was a great conversation, like I said, for a guy with his accolades um, to just come on and congratulate us on the win. Say, Coach, didn't mean anything by it. I mean, that means a lot. You know, there's a lot of people's egos that wouldn't allow him to say stuff like that. So I, I don't know him. And uh, for that to be our first conversation meant a lot to me. Um, as far as when I saw it, it was actually the last thing I saw leaving the locker room. And so I don't know why. At the end of the game, I mean, you guys don't understand, most people don't, what it's like to coach a football game and go through three and a half hours of that. And you are mentally wiped, you know. I mean, it's a blowout. And every every possible emotion you have. And, you know, in that moment, I felt like defending my team. I was irked by it. And uh, I don't know, sometimes things just happen. <laughs> I don't know, but that's that's what what happened right there. And again, my intentions were to protect this football team and stand up for it. No, nothing more than that. And uh, felt like I did that. I don't know. I'm not on social media very much, so I don't know what the response was. My sons told me it was good, but you know, it's like the I tell people all the time. Like when when you speak, there's going to be a percentage of the country that thinks you're right and a percentage that thinks you're wrong immediately. And that's just where we are right now. And so I know that that happens whenever I talk. There's going to be people that think I'm wrong and people think I'm right. And ultimately, you know, you have to do what you think is best and right for the group that you lead. And for me, uh, as the head coach of this football team, I'm going to stand up for 11 years of hard work and all the players that helped me do it and the coaches that helped me do it and the fans that believe in it. And so until they tell me I don't get to do that anymore, that's the kind of coach you're going to have. Your players fired up? They they talk to you about it at all? Yeah, they, they they liked it. Yeah, I mean, again, it wasn't about calling out Steve in particular. I think we all agree he's a tremendous guy. It was more about just the statement itself. And um, like I said, man, this university is different. Like if you come around here in, in the winter time, and for me, like I try to get to an Olympic sport whenever I can, and I'm always in awe. Like when you walk into a wrestling match or you, know, you go over to a baseball game, whatever, and just how many people are there. You know, I've been in universities where it's just not like that. I mean, it really is a one sport school in some places from a fan base standpoint, not from an effort or an attitude or a skill set with the teams. But some places don't have the, uh, you know, on site support that you get at NC State. And, and you know, we're in the, <clears throat> the director's cup with all the different sports, how that adds up. So it's just, you know, like I said, people can say with they want it's just you know do your homework know what you're talking about be critical when that's what you should be I mean I no problem with people throwing darts at me after the Duke game I earned it you know we didn't do a good job and that falls on me but when you look at the program and the university overall you know people have to understand what we've built as a program and you know it started way before I was here I mean the success of this place football basketball track everything else has been going on a long time Ethan 
Coach Clemson blitzed MJ Morse pretty constantly. Just how do you think he handled that pressure? I mean, obviously he didn't turn the ball over. So just how do you think he handled that blitzing? Yeah, I mean, it starts there. We're getting a lot of pressure, period. And I think, you know, with with uh, going back to Notre Dame, I mean, we've been seeing blitz from everybody, and it's just kind of what it is right now. Um, MJ's doing some really good things at times. There's other times, you know, where things collapse on him pretty quick and got to get rid of the ball faster maybe than he wants. I thought he did a tremendous job on one of the third downs um, where he kind of moved around, backed up in the pocket, slid over to his left and hit key on for a first down. I thought that was a really good job by the O-line and the running back uh, as well. But, you know, it's just the timing of all this and uh, continuing the, the chemistry, you know, with his receivers and just reps, reps, reps. You just keep working all that and know that we're going to keep seeing, you know, the things that we're seeing pressure-wise. That's just how it is right now. We do the same thing. We're blitzing people all over the place. And you, know, you see it from Miami. They're a big pressure team. There's going to be a lot of that coming. Thanks. JC? Um, in honor of Halloween, we know you are a big George Brett guy. Yeah. Was there a Chiefs player growing up that you could have worn a Halloween jersey of one time or thought about? Because I don't think you've ever expressed a Chiefs player like you have uh, the affection to a George Brett. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, so two players that I loved with the Chiefs when I was a kid, and one of them's local, so that, that'll be good. First uh, non-local was Derek Thomas, the defensive end, who was just a phenomenal pass rusher. I loved watching DT play. Uh, but Dino Hackett, you know, Dino Hackett, former Appalachian State linebacker, and um, had the privilege of meeting him actually in the offseason. But uh, he was a middle linebacker for the Chiefs, and, and I, I think Bill Cower might have been coaching there then on defense when uh, Marty Schottenheimer was their head coach. But he had the big neck roll, you know, and uh, shoot all of us high school players in Kansas City uh, that everybody wanted to look like him. And he was mean. He was tough. And uh, so, yeah, that, that was one of the guys that at a young age, watching those two guys play, I loved them. James? Dave, I just wanted to ask you real quick about uh, Jordan Poole. You were able to get him in some reps on the offensive side. It physically looked like he gave you a couple of good reps. Yeah, Jordan was a really good high school running back as well. And, uh, you know, he and I talked throughout the season just trying to find ways to utilize what he can do to help the team win. And uh, about two weeks before the bye week, he brought it up, you know, and I said, let's get to the bye and we'll, you know, sit down and talk some more about it. I don't want to spend time with the staff. And the last thing I want to do is move a guy. And it doesn't really help him from a depth standpoint. Um, so during the bye week, he got some reps there. You could immediately see his ability to help, um, not just as a blocker, which is what you saw this weekend, but he ran the ball well in practice. He caught the ball well out of the backfield. And so now it's just getting him caught up in, you know, all the vernacular with Coach Goble and Coach and I. But I think it's a good move for him and for us. You know, he's going to bring value there. Uh, he adds a dimension uh, to the backfield, and he's really physical. And so it just gives us a running back that can go fill and fit like a linebacker um, or a old school fullback, but a guy that can run, you know, I mean, he's really got, if you watch that run, long run by KC early in the game, you can see him tracking him down the field. He can run. JB. Hey Dave, sorry to get in here late. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations on getting your hundredth career victory as a head coach. Um, but I wanted to uh, ask you as far as you kind of showing that side that you showed, you know, off of Steve Smith's situation and this kind of the trust factor that you gained off of having, you know, your programs back like that, you know, for players and fans and, you know, others who haven't seen that side of you or whatever, what, what, what kind of trust factor do you think you gained off of that or whatever when, when, when you show how much you love this program and how much you have this program's back to the future? You know, I don't know if I can answer that. I mean, you're asking me what other people think, and um, you probably know better than I do. You're reading their comments. But, you know, there just comes a point in time as a competitor where you're sick of it. And I was sick of it, you know, and so you can either stand there and take it or you can fight. And I've been asking our players to fight and fight and fight and told them I would. And I thought that was an opportunity to show that. And, and I know that's meaningful, you know, in the locker room, how it is outside the locker room. I really don't know. Um, and I'm not going to say I don't care. I do. I want people to respect what we do here, but it wasn't meant for them. It was meant for our team. And 
like I said, for the 11 years of players that have helped me here uh, and given a lot, you know, there just comes a point in time where if something's said that's not true, it needs to be corrected. And that's it.